Hello, everybody. I'm Steve Scott, and welcome to another episode of Judo Analysis. And in this show, I'm going to examine um, Hikomi Geishi. Hikomi Geishi is often confused now with Sumi Geishi. Okay, Hikomi Geishi means to pull down and roll backward. Okay, and, and roll, you know, forward or to, to my back, you know, but like a backward somersault. So that's what the throw implies. It is often confused with Sumi Geishi. And in past, Hikomi Geishi was also used in, in what is now called uh, Obitori Geishi, the belt grab reverse rolling throw. And you'll see, we're going to explain that in the videos here. And so anyway, we're going to take a real close look at Hikomi Geishi, the way we practice it, and I think the way most people practice it, but there's some variations that I like to stress in, in, in my working with my guys. So here we go, Hikomi Geishi. Okay, we're going to work on, uh, this is a great series of techniques, we're going to work on some really old school judo, sambo, jiu-jitsu, uh, but it's, the cool thing about judo, it adapts, okay, so you're going to see some throws that, you know, they're really old fashioned, but like the old coach said, it's so old fashioned, it's cool, well, that's what this stuff is, this is really great stuff. We're going to look at, uh, first of all, Hikomi Geishi, we're going to work at the very basic the old school way of doing it, which is still works, and we're all going to do a, the, a newer way, which for a long time was also called Obitori Gaishi, belt grab uh, back roll. We'll talk about that momentarily. I'm going to have Derek demo real quick. Let's do the first one where you come under hook. Now, the first one here's the, this is the old school judo version of it. It looks kind of like he's going to come in for a one arm seinagi, right? But he's not. Now, notice the starting position on every throw, but certainly these as well is essential. So if, if Derek is standing square with Eric, he wants to get a little more over to the side, so he has his body, has room to move his body in. Okay, it's very important. All right. He's got a good grip here. Now with his right hand, he's gonna come up here, and he's gonna underhook like he's doing a semi-nagi, and notice how he stepped in with that left foot. Okay, right hand here, that hooks, that's important. He's gonna keep that. Now with his right foot, he's gonna put it right inside the right thigh here, okay? of Eric, and he's going to roll back, and he's going to roll over his right shoulder. So if you hooked here, that's the shoulder you're going to, okay? So come on out again and just watch how he does it. Right over on top. This has double trouble for the guy getting thrown. You throw him, and also you put him right in the position, like we say, a total package. I want to, I have every intention of pinning you, arm locking you, choking you, leg lock, whatever, I want to finish you. So this is one of those great throws that is a total package. It not only is a throw, it's a great way to transition from standing to ground. So let's look at it again one more time in full speed. Right over on top. And he gets real fancy, of course. Nice juju <laughs> Italian, we want to do that. But you could stick him with that nice hole there, okay? A nice vertical pin. So let's look at it again. So everybody, we're going to come in. He starts, he squared, he was squared, he moved to the side. Underhook. Just solid, okay? Now, see the foot in there? He's either far in it, you'll find out on your own. Either you're closer in, you're further out. It depends on your body size, how far you're gonna be away from him. But you wanna have room to move your right knee to jam that shin right up inside this right thigh here of Eric, okay? Now you see how it's locked here, locked here? Now when he rolls back, he's gonna get real round. He's gonna roll over his back toward his right shoulder. Watch him again come right over on top, there it is. That'll take some skill to do. Don't just throw him and let he's gone. You want to finish him if you can. Because after you throw him, you don't want him to get back up. You want to, you want to keep him there. Okay. With, with all the, the sumi geishi type throws, the, the idea is whichever plant leg you have, you're trying to sit on that heel. So don't think about, well, I'm just going to roll backwards like that, because then he ends up landing on you. As soon as you take that plant foot and your foot comes up, you sit down and roll. See how you did a backward shoulder roll? Okay, one more time. So just watch. And 
you see the thing that set up that good back shoulder roll and that whole nice round movement was the fact that he got good starting position. If you start square on, you could probably pull this off if you square up, because you'll do it a lot better if you give yourself some angle, that, that angle ring. Because you're, you're actually clearing that path for yourself already. When I come in square up, the problem with that is that I'm gonna go over the shoulder and I've already turned this way. So my foot is pointed here. I'm gonna go backwards whichever way my, my foot is pointed. I wanna be going back this way, so my foot needs to be pointed that way. Show them what you mean, still doing that. So if I, I step on this way, my foot's pointed straight, I catch, and when I come back, you know, it's a little bit harder because I'm not on that angle. I'm we want to use up. every advantage we get, and one of those is, is body, body position, okay? So by stepping up from square up, he moves to his right, now he's starting to set him up. As it, that gives him, like he said, he gives that, he's got that opening, that alley to come in. I'll get out of your way. Go ahead. And as I come in, now when I, I sit back and I, I try and sit on my heel and I roll over my shoulder, I'm going to go right over the shoulder instead of having to get my head out of the way when I'm square. So we're through here, back, boom. But because you're on that angle, you'll come back perfectly over the shoulder. When you come square up, again, you have to reorient that way and get your head out of the way and roll over the shoulder. Make sense? Let's get there. Let's start that. That's our base. We'll go on from there. That's a great way to start. That is the original application. It was called Hikomi Gaishi. Hikomi means to, uh, to pull down. And Hiki means to pull, right? It means to kind of pull down. And Gaishi means to like roll backwards. Rolling the reverse. Reverse direction. That's what it means. All right? Let's do that and we'll move on to some other stuff. Okay, what we're going to show now is, for a long time there was kind of a, a gray area between kind of nomenclature on these throws names, okay? Uh, you call it Hikomi Geishi, which is the, the pulling down, the pulling, uh, rolling backward throw. Or it was also called Obi Tori Geishi. Obi means belt, Tori means to grab, Geishi means to roll backwards. So grabbing the belt and rolling backwards. So it went actually by both names, okay? Uh, so kind of, there are minor differences, I do it this way, you do it that way. So there's kind of a gray area, but recently the Kodakon changed it where Obitori Gaishi is something different now. It's more of a stand-up throwing, like a Carbarelli type throw. And this is now the official Hikomi Gaishi, according to you. At least that's what I'm reading, it just came out. We've always called this Hikomi Gaishi anyway. I didn't use that Obitori Gaishi, you know, terminology too much. You guys have been around with me, we haven't used it a lot. I always like this phrase, Hikomi Geishi, because you're pulling them down and rolling them backwards. And it really does describe it well. There are a lot of different ways to do it. So let's look at it. We just learned, with, before we did the very fundamental, the very basic way, the very old way of doing Hikomi Geishi, now you will see some changes here. This is more, a bit adapted to more of the modern Judo Sambo thing. And you see this a lot in Sambo, by the way. So, Derek, or Eric may be bending over. And a very low slung type fighter. This is perfect for this, okay? Let's come on back here, guys, so you get some room. Okay, so what we're going to do here now, okay? My head in the middle? Yeah, get your head in the middle. Ah, yeah, out yeah, of the yeah, middle. Yeah, 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 All right. Get your head in the middle. All right, now, let's look at some situations here. This one, we're going to come straight into them. Derek's going to just come barreling in full bore right in the middle, okay? All right, but what he's going to first do, he's going to get a Georgian grip. You know what we come to call in some of the Georgian grip, and it's just an over the shoulder, near shoulder back grip, and grab the belt. By grabbing the belt, you've got a great handle. Remember the old phrase, "Everything's a handle." Well, certainly with a belt, and bend them over. Now, at this point, what Derek wants to do with his arms entirely up to him, but we see it a lot where what will happen, he'll, he'll swim through there and catch, and he can then catch and hook it or catch an underhook like this, whatever works. But I like. And turn around here. It, 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 see, see how he catches it? Catch it there. Trap his shoulder. He's trapping his back. He's trapping his this shoulder. Now he's really trapping it really solidly. There, okay? 
turn back around. So there's the setup, all right? Now, what he's going to do, remember the, the hand that grabs the belt, that's probably the foot that's going to attack. It doesn't have to be. That's your choice. You, you play with that one and work out here. Experiment, see which works better for you. Generally, the one that grabs the belt is usually the one that goes up, and it will, and I really think you probably should, so let's just go ahead and say, use it right, your right hand's grabbing the belt, have your right foot do the attacking. Either, either thigh, either on this side or this side, inside of the thigh. So remember in the other way, the original way of doing the komigeshi, you jammed it up there and rolled. So let's come on back here and we'll, we'll actually do it. So actually just go ahead and grab, just do one so everybody can see it. See how that sets them up? Not only does it throw them, it takes them down. It's a great transition right to the ground. Perfect pinning situation. See, now that time he caught him straight up through the middle. Let's, whatever, you know, just look at that again. Again, this one is straight on. The other one had a little angle. This one's straight on. Get the Georgian grip, okay? Now, probably a good way is underhook there because now that really controls his whole upper body, really, by trapping. Now, when he steps in, you're going to step in. Come on back out. Now, look how he stepped in. See how that left foot stepped in? There's your anchor, and there's that. Now, he just rolls back, and he rolls over his right shoulder. Goes right on top. Just doing a reverse, you know, shoulder roll, or, you know, backward shoulder roll. You do one more time. It's, it's an easy fall to take. It really is, guys. Right into it, and you stick it. I mean, you are parking in there. So it's 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 one of those, like we say, it's a total package. It's a throw. It's also a transition from standing to ground. It really does finish the, the match. So get the Georgian grip, come in. Right there. And of course, you want to get fancy get to Juju. We all love Juju Katami, so that's good. <laughs> one more thing to think about, though, when you do this, guys. Tie it one more time, guys. And, and, uh, now, when we're doing this, your Georgian grip, remember, come on out, it's let me be real sloppy, come over the top. But that's not the way to get the Georgian grip, okay? Don't come flying over the arms like that or the shoulders like that. When you're doing it, be, be clever about it. Just slide your hand on like you're slicing. Yeah, come up and catch it. See how, see how he drove his head? That's really important because using his elbow in the back of his head and then grab. Now he's got a solid grip. If he just came over and grabbed the belt, you know, Eric might launch him with something else. So when you get that Georgian grip, you get that inside, that, that near side grip there, do it smart. And then you come on in. Right on top. We good? Let's work on that. That one is more, you see this a lot in Sambo, and you see this, of course, a lot in Judo, too. Anything with a jacket, with a belt and a jacket, you're going to see it. So let's practice it. get it here all right when you're coming in all right if, if what you want to do is you pull him in you step in and you jam okay and you're just gonna jam and pull him into you and that's what he's doing the, the tighter I can get in there when I jam my foot my shin and his thigh and I'm gonna suck him into me you'll see Derek do that in a second because I want to close his body to mine that's really important. Then I do that, and I drop under <coughs> him and roll him over me. Okay? And you do that. Replicate that. Jam. You see how that rolls? It's a spinning movement. You see how that works really? And it's a round. It's very round. It's really hard to counter. So he's doing it right side of here now. So that grip here, this is important because this traps and rolls the shoulder. This left hand on this lapel in this case is going to anchor him and pull him into it. Okay, and when he steps in, jams and he rolls under. That's a Hikomi Geishi, but he's coming at an angle and it's, it's kind of a spinning under him to do it. Can you do it with your back toward the yeah. camera? So he's got there. Right over. See how he rolls him right over. Okay, the tighter you can get, if you think you've got to come in and fall down first, that's not the order. You've got to come in jam him tight and then sit under him and it rolls him over your body and that's that's the sequence of events let's look at how he does it again so 
but we'll do it slow. I'll talk you through it. When he comes in, you see how he's kind of coming from the side, by the way? Okay, now he steps with his right foot in. Now look at that left foot coming in jams. Now see, he's sucking Mike to him real tight there. All right, now what he's going to do, he's going to roll, he's going to sit down and roll Mike over the right. You see how that happened? Okay, come back again. So when he steps in, there, see that? Now, now this, this is controlling Mike's body here. He's got him jammed up. See how tight he is here? Now he's pulled Mike on him. That's really important to do. You don't have any body space at all. That's what we're trying to emphasize here. Now when, when Derek, he's going to let him sit down and sit on his right butt and pull Mike over that way, right on top. And you'll see this often in Sambo, I'm sure you see it in Judo as well, but um, it's a great transition in addition to a throw. You get your points for your throw, you throw it pretty hard, and you end up right on top of them into a controlling situation, a side control or a pin. Most likely you'll end up in a pinning situation like this, not so much a submission technique. Let's look at that one more time. It's not a hard fall to take either, guys. So let's look at that one. Now, one let me parse it out real quick. See the grip? That's control there. He's not thinking any type of a sacrifice move now. He's really not. He's thinking you're going to do something like a big body movement or something, say Nagy shoulder throw. Now, this is tight here, okay? Now, watch how he steps in. He steps in across him. See that foot in there? It jams. And when he does it, I'll get out of his way and have him roll Mike over his shoulder. Right over. Mike gets a lot of air time, but Derek is on his body. There's not, he doesn't lose him in the throw. Derek rolls over on top of him. He did that slowly so you can kind of see it. But when you do it, watch, it's just like one big hook of people there. Right on top. That's it. So it's kind of a spinning Hikomi Geishi. If you want to call it Sumi Geishi, you can because you're kind of coming at an angle. But you're, you're not throwing him at an angle, you're throwing him directly over his body. It makes sense to everybody? Are we good at it? You think you give it a try? Let's give it a try. Okay. Look at another version of Hikomi Geishi. Okay, this is one you don't see a lot. Uh, you should because it's a great technique, and there are a lot of variations of this. This is when Hikomi Geishi is um, is a side sacrifice. Instead of rolling backward, Derek's going to be rolling more, whipping over on the side. And you'll see what it, and it's a big body slam too. So you don't want to take a lot of falls on this. And you know we got a nice tatami here, so let's use it. Now let's look at this. So. It, it will be also if he's bent over. A lot of times they'll start him bent over. Okay. Now, in Hikomi Geishi, in this particular variation of it, um, you're going to be kind of whipping under him. So, can you just go ahead? Yeah. Now, the, I want to focus in on the whip first of all before we get placement. It's really important. You see this hole right here? Derek's head's going to go through that hole as his foot head and foot to go through it, okay? So that's really the fighting feature of this, which will whip Eric over sideways. So that's the big point here we're trying to do. I want to cover that first, okay? So let's come on back up. All right, now, like with the other Hikomi Geishi version, we're gonna grab, we're gonna get the good Georgian grip action here. Solid belt, keep that belt, because it's very fundamental here. Now, the way I like it, you can adapt it to any way you want, but Often, if you can take with Derek in, in his right hand, wouldn't get your right hand this, on that elbow because he wants to steer that elbow in. Okay. Now, as he's doing this, really before he starts, he probably should be more of an angle. Let's start again. Let's get you an angle. So when you're gripping, you're fighting. So Derek's moving at an angle from here. Now, if he were straight on with Eric, it would be harder to do, and you get a better whip basically to throw him sideways when you're an, at an angle. Okay. So. So Derek's really is at Eric's right shoulder here. See that? He's got the belt. He's pushing down. He's controlling. This hand drives through in the basic form that I'm going to show you. As the head drive, the, that head drives through, his head's going to go through that hole, and his foot's going to whip. Okay? So come on out and actually do it. Just take a nice clean fall. Whips him. It's really just a fast body whip. And it's, well, you saw it, it rolled to a side and we're getting that straight back. And that's it. 
you may or may not end up in a nice pin to the top, but you sure threw the heck out of that guy. He knew he got thrown, okay? So let's look at that, let's parse that out one more time. We're gripping, okay? Now at this point, as you're coming in, think tactics here. I gotta be in the right position to throw him. If I, if I, if Derek's square on with him, he's not in the right position. So he wants to move over, so Derek is moving over to his left, because he's gonna be coming through here, to the left side. Probably got this, he may start with that, but he's definitely now he's gonna get his Georgian grip, he's gonna come over the near shoulder, see that? And see how he's far enough over to the side. Now, when he's gonna drive this arm through, head whips through, watch his foot now. See how his head and foot work together? Like they were connected, which they are, to his body. <laughs> so, he, when he swung through, as he drove the head through, he swung the foot through. Not foot first. That's what I messed up the most when I was initially doing this. Head first, your foot can fall right behind you. You go foot first, you tend to kind of headbutt his arm. Yeah, and you've got to dip your head through that hole. But if you do it foot first, you're absolutely right. If you do it foot first, you tend to just kind of try to roll them over your head. You've got to dip your head very deeply through that hole. So it takes a lot of skill to do that. It takes a lot of guts to do it too. Do the same side, Derek, but turn around so they can see your head yeah. and foot coming through. So look how he got. So he, he positions his body over the side, catches the Georgian grip, and watch what he does. See that? They work simultaneously. They work as a unison, as, as a, you know, as a unit there together. Okay. Any questions? I'll come, I'll come around the other side. So now watch. What we're going to focus here is that, that the whipping through. When he comes through, he catches here. Now again, there are a lot of ways to control this arm to get it through there to push through, but the basic form I'd like you to do tonight is to push with this elbow in because see how that chucks his arm in? That makes him bend more and opens the hole deeper. And when he does that, see how that head goes through? That's what we're talking about, that all or nothing type, and his foot will come through. And remember, yeah, there you go. Remember, if you're square on, you're not going to get that roll as well. He had to position over. So position is fundamental in this. Yeah, that's good. Pushing in, Duck under, I can see the other side. Over he goes. See that? If you can't see over there, then your head isn't through. So don't stick your foot in until you can see that. Make sense? We're good. If you're round and you have a good pull, it's a very easy throw to do. It looks difficult and like you're, it's a strength move. It's not. You're basically bowing them up and then rolling backwards and kicking them on the back end. He said a key word. Stay round. Yeah. Stay round. If, he, I, if okay. I go flat, he's, it's not going to work. I've got a hold of this and drop my elbow to, to trap his hand on the lapel. Okay? And then as I roll back, I'm going to plant my foot here, pull, roll that direction and kick. Okay? Okay, we're gonna uh, do really a sumigeishi, a corner counter, you could call it maybe hikomigeishi, uh, if you want to from this position, and that's fine too. But it's really uh, a great sweep or roll from the bottom, and Derek's gonna coach you here. Uh, we're gonna show it on two levels, one with Mike's on his knees, uh, you know, in this position, or when Mike stands. So we're gonna look at two different levels of this, and take it away, bud. Okay, so like with any sumigeishi, my shin is either right up the middle, which is a little bit more effective, or it's on the opposite side that I'm going to roll. So if I'm going to roll over this shoulder, I'm hooking that leg, almost like the elevator. Okay, but the difference is I'm going to pull him up into the air and roll him over and then kick. The kick comes at the end. Okay, so let this be like a spring.
catch his opposite lapel, pull him down, and grab the belt. Okay? I've got a hold of this, I drop my elbow to, to trap his hand on the lapel. Okay? And then as I roll back, I'm gonna plant my foot here, pull, roll that direction and kick. Okay? Now there'll be a natural question, well, can he post with his right hand? Let's watch him do this again. Watch what Derek does to prevent Mike from posting his right hand out here. See, and now when he does this, when he starts chopping things in, look at this, his knee's gonna be up here and it's gonna be nice and high, and that keeps Mike from pulling it out. And if he does, the roll's already happened. Yeah. So my forearm, as soon as I pull them in, I'm trucked down, dropping my elbows so my forearm traps his wrist, then my knee comes up and traps his elbow. Okay? This side arm keeps his head down. He might stick it up a little bit. Mike's doing a good job of keeping it down because he doesn't want to face plant when I go through the next part. Okay? So push off this foot, pull, roll over the shoulder and kick. See how you roll right over onto him into a very strong yep. pinning controlling position. You should see the leg staying with him as you kick all the way through. Keep a hold of your grip so the back end of the throw until you get used to it, it pulls you with him. And then of course you've got the pin at the very end. Okay? Can you emphasize what you do with your right hand and Georgia grip? Because that, that is a really strong grip. Here. Okay. I'm going to catch this lapel and as I pull down, I reach over and I grab the belt and I drop my elbow. Now did you see real quick, I, I don't want to interrupt you, I'm sorry, but on the same shoulder. Yeah, so I'm, it's like, same side I grab on this side, my hand shoots straight across as I pull in, pull his shoulder or the top of his shoulder into my armpit, grab the belt, drop your elbow, okay? Walk with your knee on this side, foot's planted, okay? And I've got a nice, solid grip to pull, okay? Now we're gonna step it up, literally step it up, where if he stands, if he's, if there's more space between you and your okay. opponent. You want it from, he's up, I'm down, right? Or we're both up? Uh, yeah, you're down, he's up. Yeah, okay, so public. Okay, so he pops up through right here, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull him and grab some belt. If I can, I'm gonna grab there. So he's usually like trying to work on this leg to pass, so his head isn't straight up. And he's giving me the lapel on this side. So you pull, grab, okay? Plant, pull, hit, hit. It's actually easier because he's up higher, so when he rolls over, it's easier to flip him over. But you have to, to get a good pull. So when we're here, he's bent over, okay? He's working a leg or he's trying to get a pass. I'll usually hook the inside of this leg to keep some leverage and point my knee out. Pull, grab, over. So that's Subigeishi, Hikomigeishi from the bottom, 